Hey, Crucible Radio listeners, take your gaming with you. The ultra-thin Predator Helios 300 offers a 7th gen Intel Core i7 processor and NVIDIA GeForce tech. You know, that's the good one. That's what you need to play Destiny 2. They're going to give you a tear and tear free gaming experience unlike any other. So go to Acer.com, click on store and enter coupon code CRUCIBLE at checkout to receive 10% off plus free ground shipping on a Predator Helios 300 laptop, including already discounted models. The offer is valid through April 30th, 2018 and limited to one per qualified order. Intel Chime. Diet Coke. Welcome to Mike and Mike in the morning. Wake up, Chicago. It's time to talk about the Go Fast update in Destiny 2. It's happened. It's fast. It's super fast. It's uh, rumble in the showdown. <laughs> oh, let's get it going. Uh, yeah, I got a question. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Joey, you're on the line. Something, something about your mom. What the? Why did you say disconnect? <laughs> I said something, something about your mom. No, no, no. I said disconnect. When I say disconnect. fill in the blanks. Hey, 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 Sway, are you doing anything on the boards over there? When I say disconnect, it means hang up on the guy. I don't have the button over on my side. Italian Sway over here is doing his best. Italian Sway visiting from New York, and I'm doing a New York accent today in honor of him, but this is a Chicago radio station, true and true, representing the Windy City. Pizza. Ugh. That I love you. If I told you lately, you're not funny <laughs> as much as you used to be. I'm singing a love song to Rumble Birds. Shut up. Oh, okay. Okay. I'll harmonize that. Eee! <laughs> 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 All right. Welcome back to Crucible Radio. Oh. Oh, I guess we just found out that Birds' concept of harmonizing is just it's hitting just the highest ee- note. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not redlining on Audacity, you are mm. not trapped. <laughs> it's called harmonics. Maybe you've heard them, or maybe you need to hear them again. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh, we're having fun. Uh, welcome to Crucible Radio, the podcast for all things Destiny 2, PvP. It's a big one today, folks. Oh Later we'll be talking to back. good friend Fallout. But first you get to hear from us because we have played a ton of Destiny in the last two days. And yeah, we're recording this two days after the update. So I made sure to spend no quality time with friends and family <laughs> leading up to this recording. <laughs> and only playing the, the patch we've done uh, we've done a little bit of everything, but we are definitely going to focus on, uh, the, you know, the most readily apparent things. And then next week we'll talk about comp. But guys, should we just should we just dive in? Oh, let's dive. Well, okay. So before we dive in, uh, we need to point out that the hits keep on coming. Not two days into this new balance patch and a whole bunch of new stuff to figure out. And uh, oh me, oh my, we'll be figuring it out for some time. Uh, We get hit with a little tidbit from the next tuning, the exotic tuning, in May. Oh, boy. And now when we say May, we're also talking about private matches coming out, talking about changes to the uh, the faction rallies. We got a bunch of stuff. But this uh, this exotic tuning, you know, they sort of, we've gotten some tidbits, right? Like, I want to say there was a blurb where... News talked about like Graviton Lance or something. It's mostly like, oh, his no, Twitter no, where he's okay. like, oh my God, the, you know, R- Sturm and Drang just won a rumble. Right. Well, and, and that's the kind of thing where it's like, oh, they've got some play test build. That's fun. That's probably going to get edited out. Uh, but now it's made it into the TWAB and uh, we just saw Sturm two tap, like really, really two tap. Yeah. Like, Zero point five five <laughs> seconds time to kill with that, with that bullet, that magic bullet. That was pretty amazing. I don't want to hear it when people ask for a shorter time <laughs> to kill. You getting it? 
Yeah, this thing, this thing is silly, and it's like, and you have to, you have to work it right. Like you have to have your 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 energy weapon to get that kill to get yourself that magic bullet. Uh, you could use drain. Drain seems like a good one to pair it with. So you know, it's not just it's not just guaranteed. But uh, I got to tell you, in that video they were making it look not too difficult. So uh, yeah, exoticy, very exotic. I like that feeling of exoticness for, in those guns. Yeah, I mean. One was outside of Acreus, when's the like last exotic you had regularly equipped? Truth? Rad King. <laughs> D D one. Truth. <laughs> yeah, I, I give you Rad King. Actually, I'm I'm looking at it. I play with Sunshot every once in a while. Yes, it is one. Yeah, I like a sunshot. Um we all had the lens for a minute. But I feel uh, like though I've I've just been running legendaries. More yeah, you you run what works right now, and that's kind of like the most exciting part about the May update, along with new content, is that it just seems like like let's make these things truly define a play style. And what I like about the 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 Sturm thing is that it it doesn't just happen. It's not just like we made the gun good. It's got to come in to play with that combo. You've got to adapt your style to the Sturm and Drain combo. You're not just freely getting two tap headshots. And that's cool. That means that player will be recognizable as a player using this lowdown. And that's kind of always my thing. I like I like when pe- players have identities and I feel like the exotic weapons are finally going to give an identity. And I'm mine is going to be Rat King and I've already decided. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you're going to have to use Drang outside of the two tap, you know, function too. You're going to hope for Right, the ability right. to get it into that lane, but every other encounter you're gonna still have to use it. So you know what I'm looking forward to as part of this May release is Swain eventually remembering which one is Sturm and which. I've one been is calling Drang. them Sturm. Sturm is the is the primary, <laughs> and Drang is the secondary. That's true. There you go. I'm learning. There you go. <laughs> Proof is in the applesauce. I just got the missus some applesauce. She's feeling a took a sick day today. Very aggravated because I work from home and I'm very loud trying to sleep. <laughs> Why are you then, so uh, loud? I just I like to stomp around the house and yell into a phone. I mean, what's so what's so un, un, weird? I just have a loud voice and I laugh loud and uh, you know we have a lot of fun. But um, anyways, I felt bad for being so noisy, so I went and bought her uh, bought her some applesauce. So that's the way the applesauce crumbles. Let's talk about go fast. Uh, where do we, where do we even start? I mean, I don't want to go down the list of these changes again. I certainly have not played all of the changes yet. I haven't even picked up my Hunter yet. I haven't even played Arc Strider yet because I've just been playing my Warlock and I like it. (laughs) So, I mean, like, uh, normally we would go for patch notes pretty thoroughly, but this is probably a novel of patch notes. Not to mention we did that very Uh recently and while we do have percentages in this it's not going to totally enhance the conversation if we tell you from 16 to 18 which (laughs) equals plus 12.5 percent on the high impact (laughs) pulse rifle i I think that might just clutter it up a bit no one no one wants to hear that fallout (laughs) (laughs) okay well let's do this at least uh Let's before we get into like guns and stuff, and certainly before we get into rumble, let's talk about subclasses. Deal, because uh, certainly some stuff happened here. I played my warlock, and I did a lot of focus bursting around. I like it, and I think it's good. And I don't care what anyone says, even though everyone's agreeing that focus burst is fantastic. I yeah, I don't I don't know what to say. I I played Dawnblade. I liked it. I like how uh how. F- how fast you go when I felt like I got, you know, I got like a three piece or a four piece or something like that with my super had that happened in vanilla. I would have thought like, Oh my, this is, you know, save that clip. And now it just felt like, Oh yeah, that's what happens now. That's what happens. You just, uh, you're a flying fire monster. And you're really fast. And you got infinity swords to shoot at people. It, well, what else would happen? You kill everybody. I'm afraid of how much I would like Don Blade. <laughs> So I'm I'm Man. saving it for when I need something to do. Beyond the super, I, uh, Dawnblade is a whole different class to me now. Because like just overall, the being able to tra- traverse the map, 
comfortably, like I've been talking about for the past few weeks, which is just like, you know, having that rhythm and that flow of like jump, press, jump again, push forward, move, jump, push forward, move, jump, push forward, move. That is just so satisfying. And it's how I've always, it's why I've loved warlocks and stuff like that. They're, they're aggressive and graceful, um, but it's really cool. And the jump gives you really solid forward movement, but it doesn't just automatically translate into everyone's good at warlock now, or this is the best class now. If they, for some reason, raised the damage done by firebolt grenades, then maybe you could say like, oh, play warlock. They have the best or best grenades. But it's just a movement thing. And the super two is like the super's hard to use. Versus where it was, maybe not a, lot of, not a lot of people did it, but you just sort of sat in one place above a map and dropped straight down. And now you just fly past the target really, really fast. So there's like a ton of skill involved in this class now, and it makes it so much more interesting to play. Uh, I think there was skill there, obviously, but it was a lot of like, wow, you really have to like, dedicate time to this. It's not a pick up and play class and you can't immediately figure out like what makes this so amazing. And now it's just uh, a technically skilled class with a ton of power, but like very easy to overdo it or, or fuck it up or not really realizing why you are bursting around the map at a hundred miles an hour. Cause you'll miss if you're not careful with that super, you will jump float past swing one sword. And by the time that lands and you realize you've missed you're 30 meters past your target and you just give up. It can't happen. <laughs> I mean, one thing, because I'm a total Dawnblade bandwagoner here, one thing I'm struggling to do, I, I, I've, I feel like I don't really have a good sense of the two different trees, the two mm-hmm. different attunements. And it's like, all right, the top one's got the, the twilight style dodge. The, the bottom one's got the Phoenix dive. Um, and, you know, I, I, I read the perks and I, I understand them, right? They make sense. But I feel like at this point, I haven't really grokked the classes well enough to like, to think, okay, this is the one that fits my play style. I'm going to use and abuse all of these perks when I play. I'm really going to try and, um, you know, proc them and, and take advantage of them, whatever that is. Um, and Bonesy, I, I know you've you've played both, but um, I, I kind of associate the Phoenix Dive as as a move that you're into, one that, that makes sense for your play style. I mean, I guess t- tell me tell me where to go. What should I be working on to sort of get up to speed in that Dawnblade? Yeah, YouTube? I actually think like you know they did change Swift. Was it Swift something with the flame melee for uh, air accuracy? Um, the top tree is now far more interesting to me than it ever was. Uh, the cooldown on Icarus. Dash, so you can actually do that Twilight Garrison move in the air. I mean, that was what I thought I was going to be doing when we heard that existed. And then I realized, actually, I like the bottom tree. I think I still kind of like the bottom tree because Phoenix Dive is not this crazy movement thing. Um, You're not going to, very rarely (laughs) it'll happen, but you're not going to like dodge anything or or not die because you did it, but it is an instant recovery. It is a self heal. It is the equivalent of being roadhog and just chugging half your health back uh, and being able to just continue to apply pressure or to survive a harrowing experience. And that's really, really powerful in this game. It's always going to be, I think Uh, the top tree now is just, I think aggressive players can do well. I think like risk taking players can do well. And if you and I think it's like good for everyone to try that. Like what happens if I play a class that requires that I float around in the air and try to dodge and may and melee and stuff like that? Uh yeah, I'd say watch True Vanguard for the top tree. And I'm gonna stick with the bottom tree. Cause the one downside of the top that I don't like is that it does have that in-air shooting ability. But you get stuck in the air. And yeah, now we've got this burst glide, which changes it in a great, great direction. But you can still get stuck and realize like, oh, I'm not falling. And that's an extra thing you're doing in your head, which is to force yourself down to the ground. And I think that can be strange. And I think it can result in a lot of people just getting hung out to dry in the air uh, unless you're being super careful and, and using using cover while you're while you're floating. So there's. I like seeing both, you know, be pretty viable. That's definitely fun. 
change gears. Uh, Swain, have you tried the catapult lift? I have. I like uh, the the other one, the strafe, a lot more. Um, catapult just like it sends you upward way more, and I like the ability to like stay closer to the ground uh, than I do shooting upward. <laughs> but I have seen like obviously I've seen the videos of what catapult can do so. Um, maybe some more time with it will change my mind, but I'm sticking with strafe for the time being. And I, I mentioned it earlier. I've not played my arc strider yet. I'm getting there. I'll get to you. I know you're there. Um, I'm neglecting all our hunter fans. I played, uh, I played a lot of hunter last night to be honest. Yeah. Well, I tell you, I got killed by arc staff a lot more and thought to myself, Hey, you know, good for you. <laughs> good for you. I'm not just melting you down instantaneously. Um, I like how quickly everyone everyone spun on those on those two trees, right? Like they're both super viable, but to see that top tree go from like ah, it's not practical, and you never really use it in in the real world. People just team mm-hmm. shot you down. To that top tree is like a rumble champion of dodge melee, dodge melee, and it actually worked and actually getting that video game combo out of it. That yeah, that makes me happy. Combos, man, they're fun. Bonesy, what do you think? I think it's awesome. I think it's the the right change. Uh, you, I watched clips of the old one. Do you feel like Darth Maul? Yeah, I feel maybe a little bit more like it's a little more like comical than Darth Maul. I guess he's pretty flippy <laughs> and stuff like that. But yeah, it's just it's nice and it's nice and fast. It's nice and snappy. And I think the thing that I didn't uh, realize when reading patch notes was that like the time between stuff is shorter and the activation time being different makes it a lot more capable and a lot more uh, threatening than just the fact that it is faster at top speeds kind of deal. I think that's really important because you know, that activation thing, you, you still get melted. It is fast, but you can still get shot down and activating it makes everyone either start running away and now warlocks can surf away faster or everyone turns and looks at you. What I noticed really good arc strider players doing for the past couple of weeks and definitely now is that they just go boom and they pop it in their, in your face and they whack you like because you didn't you didn't think what was going to happen. You think maybe they'd made you and they just go boom whack and it's so fast now that. It, it makes them very, very lethal as very like aggressive moves. And I noticed that popping it in someone's face is so much better than popping it behind cover and then looking out and be like, okay, well, where'd everyone go? Oh, guys, no. Here I come. Come <laughs> like they all run ya. away from you and stuff. And it's just like, no, you need to be in their face, but you have a lot more survivability uh, now. And it's a, it's a really nasty move. And being able to get to that kind of those, uh, those, reach moves where you actually swing out and do some range damage faster saves you in those spots where you you typically used to short stop and just swing. And then you're like, Oh, Oh no, they're too far. I got to try to lunge and flip and you're just too slow. So that the, the speed between the moves is bigger to me than I think than just the overall uh, sprint speed of it. But yeah, I think, uh, you know, I think all three of us are actually pretty excited to talk about rumble, but we should say, I want to, hear what weapons we've been using because I've been rotating through and there's a lot to try. Definitely a few standouts, at least that I like. I don't know about you guys. And I got to pull up my dim. What am I using? Yep. (laughs) Uh, You know, what's interesting is that I'm using a lot of the same weapons I used before. I just like them a lot more. I'm using all the same hand cannons, but they just feel so much better. And for you know, who knows where hand cannons will end up. Maybe they'll see a bigger boost or, you know, you got to do something to compete with the the Sturm in the future, something like that. But for now, um, just being able to pull out my judgment, pull out my better devils and just feel like I'm consistently hitting a higher percentage of shots. So shots that I would have missed, I'm now getting bodies. Shots that would have been bodies now getting crits. To be able to do that on controller and do it reliably, I feel like I'm not going into hard mode with it. Um, a lot of the same guns, to be honest, but, uh, yeah, it just, it just feels good. Although I got to tell you, I pulled out some of these pulses and like, they, they are good now. Like I was, um, I was really digging, uh, inaugural address, but I just, 
I'm just not a pulse rifle <laughs> guy. I just don't like it. I just don't like it. It feels weird to be like to have that rate of fire where it's bullet, 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 me, and then it's just like, why aren't I shooting? Let I me want stop to be shooting you right there. now. If you aren't using vigilant swing, you fucking up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I'd be one of those guys. All Dude, right, it's, I'll go it's, it's dust fun. It, off. it melts. It's it's so much fun. Once you get like you know the re- recoil down, you can control it. It is easy peasy. It's probably why you haven't won a rumble. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, man, that wasn't in the show yet. I haven't won any rumbles yet. I keep coming in third. It's fine. I enjoy the process. Uh, well, no, let's not talk about Rumble yet. Let's not talk about Rumble okay, yet. Well, okay, well, besides Vigilance Wing, uh, there is a gamut of pulse rifles that are now very relevant. Uh, Darkest Before is still good. On paper, the Suros Energy Pulses that are now 390 are very good mathematically. Like last last perdition. Yeah, Joram's Claw. Um, there's a there's a couple in, in there. That, there's actually a lot of those guns. Uh I the, the cadenza. I didn't, you know, it's not the one that got the most attention, but I went back to the pulse that I was using the most a while ago and nightshade feels good. I just find that that one suits my, my hand better and what I'm comfortable with timing wise for the pulses since I don't have a full auto pulse. Uh, and it just, it's in my zone and I think it feels great now. And I'm glad that that one, uh, can hang versus only one specific pulse kind of rising to the top. So I like it. You can try that one too, birds. You don't have to use vigilance wing if you don't want to. <laughs> what if you got to use sunshot? Sunshot's great now. Yeah. Hey, I'll, I'll, I'll try them. I will. I, uh, I, I do like how all of the pulse archetypes in one way or another have sort of stepped into viability. I don't see a, ton of people rocking those those 340 pulses but to to know that they're just not completely ridiculous now is nice um i definitely yeah i find myself tending towards the uh the faster ones and um i actually dusted off uh i played a few rounds with uh autumn wind that's uh one of the rapid fire uh kinetic ones from curse of osiris uh, i like it i it, it felt it felt fun um maybe not as consistent as some of the others but felt good so i've been like mixing yeah, it's not been all pitch on swing but obviously that's where i've been putting a lot of my focus but sidearms are <laughs> sidearms got above fear they're doing really well right now and uh i highly suggest if you have some of them that especially the full auto Soros ones mm, get in there with it everyone's coming around on the gun that i've been using since the fool's remedy October. <laughs> They are fun, man, and then like they feel good. I've, I've also been pairing the vigilant swing with a uh, Jack Queen King. That's oh and yeah, such a good hand cannon. It's sure. a good gun. I uh, I had a move that I hadn't had since 2017, probably. Uh, and plus, he switched. You know, I'm a Sentinel main now and stuff. But I was trying out Dawn Blade the first night, and I put on Fool's Remedy, the little full auto Iron Banner sidearm. Ended up dropping a rift when I was low and a couple guys came over the wall and all I did was just shoot until they jumped on my head in melee, reload, shoot and like heal and shoot until they jumped with melee. And I was just like, whoa, blast from the past because this is all I used to do. And it's nice to kind of (laughs) like, oh, there's all this new shit. But what about my old shit? And it was really fun. So I'm glad that 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 those guns are uh, getting the attention, even though I kind of tweeted a picture about it, you know, in October and said, uh, this is really good, but no one really cared. It's whatever. Yeah. 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 We'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, I have one, I have one type of gun I would like to talk about, but it only makes sense in the context of rumble for me. So can, can I transition? Can we, let me just real quick brag that I got the Silicon Neroma from the nightfall and it's got snapshot and it's super high impact and it's, also gorgeous and sounds amazing and it's my new favorite sniper and i like sniping now i want it thank you i like sniping with linear fusion rifles but that's just those are good too i have been having an inordinate amount of fun with the one shot grenade launchers the lightweight frame grenade launchers i know i know this (laughs) came via a tip from uh the guy who we talk about every single week (laughs) on the show here special k dude um posts on uh 
on on Reddit uh, in the playbook as uh, Patel K44, I think. Um, makes fantastic sort of demonstration videos showing the capabilities of a lot of the stuff that people aren't using, um, as well as just sort of good write-ups. And uh, true to form, nobody is using Flash and Thunder right now, except for me and a couple other people. Uh, but these are fantastic, fantastic Rumble power choices. Uh, look, Acreus is great. Uh, I'm not going to tell you to win all your all your matches using Flash and Thunder or Oromar's Wing or whatever that thing's called. Um, but these things are a blast for a couple reasons. Uh, they can one-hit kill. So if you can land your shots, which is not too difficult to do with them, uh, you get that, that quick one-hit kill up close. Uh, at range, they do a lot of damage to the point where you can clean up with a single hand cannon shot. Uh, they stun, and you get six per pickup. Mm. They don't work on every map, I've found. Um, I actually have been, I it, and this is weird, I don't think anyone has ever said this sentence, but I've kind of been enjoying Emperor's Respite as a rumble map specifically uh, because it's big enough that you can get a little bit of pacing between your engagements. Like it's just not so packed in as some of the other maps. Um, and in that context where you're, you're getting into a rhythm of open with that grenade launcher shot. And these are the uh, hold R2 to fire and then release to detonate. Um, and it is not too difficult to reliably hit your shots for opponents on the ground. And then just immediately switch to your hand cannon and clean them up and then switch back to your grenade launcher to reload. Repeat. It's, silly it works quite <laughs> well and uh nobody is doing it except for special k dude who uh who has decided to tell people about it um the fact that you get six shots alone really lends itself well to just chaining forever and rumble although again you know getting getting some acreous ammo and then just killing the guy with other power and continuing it that way is also an option um it is a weird meta choice and a, a archetypes that i hated before but they are uh they are a blast they're super funny and um they're fun and rumble i think they only make sense there but guys i love rumble i love it i find myself I love thinking about rumble more than i'd like to admit. <laughs> yeah it's just great you know what like when i loaded into that first one and i like you drop in and like i've, I've been reading about it at work just distracted all day and then you finally get in and I got that feeling at the end of it where it's like my heart is racing and I'm <laughs> a little bit flush. And that same feeling that made me love D1 Rumble so much. And like, look, this one is in many ways it is different, but like to have that feeling and then just like an hour later, just be totally, totally uh, numb to it. But just like that same rush of like, you've got to think quickly and move quickly because it's you against the world. It's still there. And it just, yeah, it feels really good. I would love, I, I don't know, the feedback I would have for this for this version of Rumble is like, I don't really care about the difference between six and eight people. Like, sometimes spawns suck, it depends on the map. You get spawned directly next to a person, or uh, you're in the middle of a fight with someone and sp someone spawns up next to you and finishes both of you off. Yeah. Um, but, I don't know, if they're... You know, if there's a solution, maybe they'll find it. I don't know. I the only feedback I have outside of that is I wish it would stay and it would be around all the time so I could constantly play Rumble and ignore all my friends. Please. <laughs> yeah, I, I would. Please, I kind of like that just because it's a playlist I can queue into by myself and always know that I won't run into a four stack. And that's always a good of feeling. Solus. Uh <laughs> Shout out to all the PC squads that just destroy me all the time. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like I can definitely see why the spawns feel a little bit busy. But I, I was thinking that, like, I really hope that there's a fix beyond that that isn't just take out two players. Like, I really hope there is because yeah. mm -hmm. if it could work and you could get that extra time when you spawn, it's fun having that, like, fast paced chaos. Yes. And like, I think it'll be okay too. If, if you can get those spawns to work is that like, then you also got that fun of like, Oh, what map is it going to be? Because it'll play a little different. Like eight people on Vostok is not very much. 
it's like a fun version of Rumble where you have a little bit more time between engagements, and that's cool. Or you get dropped into uh, a smaller map, and it's like, oh boy, this is gonna get wild, and that's cool too. So I hope that uh, variation is still is still doable. So something that we've talked about before with any sort of game mode, but like being knowledgeable of spawns is the biggest help here and Mm -hmm. finding your anchor point on the map and like i spent i had a game on vostok earlier that i just i don't even think i saw three quarters of the map for the entire game Mm -hmm. sure (laughs) like i just i posted up in my corner and i every time i got a kill uh i would anchor myself back to as far into the corner of the spot like of the map as I could so that no one was spawning behind me. And then I would wait and someone would, you know, spawn to my right or my left. And I would work around my cover and move around. So it ain't like no one would catch me from my side. And that worked perfectly. That was the way to do it. Like just make sure you are close to a power ammo or at least can get to one and control it. And you are set just, there's no, there's really no better way to play it than to observe your spawns and control them the best you can. Mm-hmm. Yep. So that's that's interesting. Like, I think the the trick to winning Rumble in Destiny One, I, same advice, but really to be aggressive, right? So you've got your anchor point, like you say, but you're pushing to go catch the person spawning, and then you're turning around and pushing to go catch the person behind you spawning. Um, and you can do that in D1, but the odds of you running into multiple people or running into a spawn you weren't predicting are just just higher. And, you know, you've got to kill the person before someone else spawns in there. So I think, yeah, playing a little bit more passively or, or just um, trying to limit the number of, of you know, sides you're exposed from, the number of, of fights you might be getting into is important. I think, though, I mean, you, you you hit the nail on the head, right? Like, you're playing around power the entire game. If you're not playing around power the entire Rumble, you're not doing it right. You really have to, you have, you have to work it. And there was, uh, I think Vostok was one that I particularly enjoyed because, um, because of that pacing you were talking about. And, I, you know, I wasn't going to win this match. I wasn't planning on it. But I was posted up at that top power. And I mm-hmm. went to go pick it up once and thought to myself, you know what? Nah, I'm just going to hide here. Let's let other people come. (laughs) And I got just a steady three kills in a row from people going, ooh, power, and toddling over to it before melting them down with the stochastic. It's great. I have a couple other uh, suggestions here. Uh, For situations like that, like map control, uh, Sunspot Sunbreaker is perfect because you get your first, like when you pop it, the Sunspot goes down. And if you pop it in the right, you know, right spot around the corner or uh, in the anchor point of your rumble map, um, you can control so much more. Because with your sunspot, you get so many more hammers and you can just kind of, you know, corner off uh, power ammo if you need to. You can con- like you could definitely catch people spawning uh, with your hammers as well because it is long distance. Um Use that. Also use the, if you're a Titan, use the feedback fences because oh, they are free kills, free kills. Like you get into a melee fight and they're going to die, uh, especially if you have your melee charge up. So you get your burned and you get your feedback fence and they just die. And that's a, that's a free point for you. It's all about kills. And if you can get a, a cheap one, then get a cheap one. I, uh, I mean, and that's the thing, like at this point in Rumble, right? Like there is very clearly a a quick early meta. I mean, you see a lot of SMG pulse rifle and you see a lot of hand cannon SMG. And, you know, maybe, you know, maybe, maybe I'll get a good lobby. I'll do well, I'll play well. And, you know, maybe maybe I'll get, get mushed a little bit. Um, I think what I'm most interested right now is just looking at every Rumble as a learning experience. So when I die or I see someone doing well, I'm thinking to myself, Okay, they've got a spot. What spot are they working there? Or they just outgunned me. Why did they, you know, we were both landing shots. Why did they win that one? Or 
I got melted down and then someone immediately picked me off instead of getting a cover. Like, where could I have been? Um, and then just really digging through the subclasses too. I really started, I really tried to intentionally work the Devour Voidwalker tree, which is something that like, you know, I've, I've, we've talked about it before. I've tried it a couple of times. But now in the Rumble environment where you really could get a kill every eight seconds and get your health back, um, really trying to work that specifically and develop a set play style. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to give myself time to do it because, uh, yeah, I, I'm having so much fun just switching around to different subclasses, different builds right now. Bones, you like Rumble? It's kind of funny, but I think I like Sentinel the most in Rumble. And maybe I'll just get more time to experiment and mess around with it. But like, yeah, I, yeah. Iron Banner comes around, Dawn Blade. I think that's going to be awesome for that. But like for Rumble, sure. I just want to, I, I don't know. I just get it. I want to get that overshield and health regen and be in the middle yeah. of it, but still take shots and just kind of tank and push through and have fun with that because it can be a really good time. So I don't know. Sentinel main, baby. I'm stay. I'm sticking with it. <laughs> you gonna you gonna you gonna pop a bubble in Rumble? I'm um, maybe. Do it. <laughs> yeah, do control it. some power, do it. maybe. Do it. Yeah, I'll think about it. Fine. It's actually people run in. It's still nothing's better than getting a kill with the shield throw. I mean, it's we've seen yeah. it since the commercial, but it's, nothing's better than that. It's it's one of the coolest things in this game. Oh, I'm gonna miss it. I really like it. Make it permanent. Yeah. Make it permanent. I'll get too bored of mayhem. Make it permanent. I think uh, I think one thing I'm really I'm really considering, which is something that you know I've never ruled out before, but just like thinking about that Devour Voidwalker, is making an armor set that's got grenade recharge mods on it now. Oh, with, so I have mostly grenade uh, recharge. Sure, <laughs> the joys of being committed to a subclass. I I can't I can't make up my mind like that. Uh, <laughs> it's amazing. It's a lot of grenades. It's I a mean, lot of grenades. Especially for Sunbreaker, but that's a lot of grenades. I was pairing it with Hollow Fire for a little bit the, at the beginning of the patch, and it was just, it was kind of crazy. How It was like every 15 seconds I would have it up, and I think I'm still missing one. I still need one more uh, from like my helmet mod or something like that. We'll see. I, uh, I would love to get them faster because it's one of the, depending on the subclass, like you're going to need to up your neutral game and having more grenades is the way to do it. See, I wonder about this. Like, I wonder about the direction that they're going with balance because D1 starts off like it's very flat, right? Everything for the most part works. Um, none of the things you can do to sort of boost up any one thing or, or make that much of a difference, right? Like exotics are all pretty like, okay, you know, um, there's no, you know, there's not any particularly like brokenly good subclasses, although there were. And now we've got mods making it so you can get your grenade every 40 seconds or faster if you've got Hallow Fire or something like that. We've got things like Sturm coming along that can two tap, I guess, because that's a thing. And I wonder if that's what we're going to see, that that we're going to start to see those spikes and that sort of change to the balance. But it just, I don't know, maybe it balances out in the wash that if this guy is really playing for the Devour build and this guy's really playing for the Sturm 2 tap and this one is really playing for the sunspots and the grenades, that if at the end of it, you, you know, you kind of end up with a rock, paper, scissors situation where... They're all kind of viable, even though they're not perfectly level sort of time to kills. I, I wonder, I don't, I don't know what good balance is. I I honestly (laughs) don't know. I kind of like them all, but I I don't know. Let's go talk to fallout. Fallout We've had him locked in a voice channel for the last 40 minutes and we're finally going (laughs) to drag him on over into this one and let him talk. Well, Well, you know, we might, we might move him into the, the, the restricted voice channel just for a second, just to give him a taste of it and then move him back out just so he knows, <laughs> just so forth, he knows, back and bring forth. him back in, but just, just, just so he knows, he knows that. Yeah. Uh, let's talk to fallout. Yeah. Eh? I would love to talk to fallout, but we should probably give a shout out to our sponsor first birds. That's right. This week, we got to say thank you for making the show possible to our friends at hello fresh. 
HelloFresh is a meal kit delivery service that shops, plans, and delivers your favorite step-by-step recipes and pre-measured ingredients so you can just cook, eat, and enjoy. You can choose from three plans, including classic, veggie, and family. And each box is delivered right to your door in recyclable, insulated packaging and made up of fresh, responsibly obtained ingredients from carefully selected farms and high-rated, trusted sources. Plus, with the simple recipes outlined on pictured step-by-step instruction cards, you can feel confident in your cooking. There's even a lot of one-pot recipes that require minimal cleanup. They really do make it easy, so you can spend less time meal planning and grocery shopping each week and get that time back to do more of what you love. And look, I, I know there's some people listening who say, oh, I don't, I don't cook, you know, I, it's, I, 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 I burn eggs. Well, what, what can I, <laughs> no, you got to give it a shot. HelloFresh makes it so easy. They've got everything ready to go. Th- these recipes are hard to mess up. They're very clear on everything. And look, you'll make a meal one time and you will taste it and you'll go, oh my God, this, did I make this? This is good. And you can keep on making it. you you know that recipe now. You can got the little card. It's all you post it on your social media, Instagram. it. I very much enjoy it. Uh, when we, we've done it a few times here in the Swain household and, uh, it's made my night so much <laughs> easier coming from the restaurant where I have to do all the prepping myself, uh, to have it all laid out, have someone uh, put it in a bag for you all ready to go. It's a uh, pretty seamless when you get home and makes it so much easier to make. Yeah, hey, I, I love cooking, but uh, HelloFresh has helped me learn new recipes, try new flavors I wouldn't do. Sweet and savory together? What? No, I, I made it. it was, I wouldn't have done it on my own, but it, it tasted pretty good. So look, for $30 off your first week of HelloFresh, visit HelloFresh.com and enter the code CRUCIBLE30. That's HelloFresh.com, offer code C R U C I B L E three zero for thirty dollars off your first week of HelloFresh. Let's go talk to Fallout. Hello there, Crucible Radio listener. We've got some fantastic music coming to you this week. I honestly, I, I cannot get enough of this album. This is so good. This is Failed Astronauts. Check them out on Spotify or go to failedastronauts.bandcamp.com. Mm. Tasty. And hey, if you are a musician, we want to play on the show. All of the music you hear on Crucible Radio comes from you, our listeners. Hey man, you got some MP3s? Just send them over. Just give me the link. Be surprised how good the stuff you guys make is. So send it over. Crucible Radio at gmail.com. I don't want to dream About you Without you Rick showed up after a little while And it's a good thing to Hello out there, all you ghost hunters I hope you're staying frosty tonight Out there in the Plaguelands Still looking for clues Looking for those conspiracies Well... Take a break for, from searching for that seventh chest in the vault to uh, join us for a little conversation today because we're joined by a very special guest. Friend of the show, returning champ, Fallout Plays is here. Hey boys, how are you? Hi, Hi, Fallout. If it isn't my favorite podcast that specifically focuses on <laughs> Destiny 2 <laughs> PvP. <laughs> Well, yep. <laughs> Specifically, us. I can't get mad at you for that. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. accurate. I was, um, I was imagining Bones more of like uh, angry, like pre-morning drive time, scream into the microphone and turn red show for truckers. But uh, 
You can do you can do soft spoken. It's just it's just not that time of day for me. I was I was thinking like he's like that late late night show that everyone turns on when they're like feeling weird and it makes them feel weirder. I don't know. I'll I'll, I'll work on it, man. It's not my best. Okay. No, it's it's coming along. I like anyways, it. Fallout, you got limited time. <laughs> Well, now hold on a second. So, what do you about it? <laughs> Why don't I get your opinion? <laughs> this is this is time well spent. <laughs> uh, Fallout, we're glad to have you on the show, and I think this is a a, a, a darn near ideal episode. Uh, we just had a big old balance patch drop. We are nominally going faster, and uh, I know you uh, you did a little bit of research into this one. You know, we're all we're all talking about how it feels. We're watching clips on Twitter that freeze halfway through because Twitter videos don't <laughs> oh work that well. <laughs> pretty bad. So frustrating. Yeah. But not Fallout, no. No, no. Fallout, he's quantifying. And uh, you've, you've done a little bit of research into, uh, into this whole go fast thing. I've tried. I mean, you can never really get the perfect data. Y- you can only really try to get as good of the clips as as good as clips as you possibly can and then try to look at them and figure out what it all means and hoping that the community won't possibly run really hard with just one point that you're making in the video <laughs> <laughs> what can I, they what never can do I that so vigilance wing is broken and op it's right that what your, that's what your <laughs> conclusion was at the end of your speed <laughs> testing of course that was, the, that was the point i was trying to make. <laughs> Uh, well, so, so so tell me a little bit about the about the research that you did, and tell me uh, tell me what you found. Well, I just wanted to try and answer the question: How are we going faster? Um, in what ways? How much faster are we going? And uh, really, there's no way to know in advance what you'll need exactly to record. So I recorded like I don't know, like like thirty or more clips about running around with. Zero mobility, 10 mobility, nine mobility, you know, walking, strafing, jumping, dodging. I I don't know. You just try to record a lot of things and then you do a before and then you do an after and then you put them next to each other and you just stare at your monitor like an idiot for about an hour and you try to go, (laughs) what does this mean? (laughs) Yep. Did I waste my time? (laughs) (laughs) The, The answer is always yes. Uh, okay, well, let, let's get into the details. I mean, maybe we should start off by talking about what didn't change. Because while they did tweak a lot of stuff, there's plenty of things that are the same after the patch. Yeah. So what, what have you found there? Um, as, as far as I can tell with the naked eye, I, I don't think they changed maximum sprint speed. Like a lot of people were. And again, one of the reasons I try to do this is because I don't like the spread of like blatantly wrong information. I'm not saying that my information is always perfect because like, again, I just use the tools I have and I try to look at it with my eyeballs. But like when people say things like, oh, like yeah, they 100%, like they made sprinting is like twice as fast. And I'm like, what do you No, Like, <laughs> I, I just want to make sure that we have relatively accurate information because I know somebody is going to ask me and I don't like it when people say things without at least doing like 10 minutes of legwork. So I, I do stuff like that to try and preemptively curb excessive crazy talk and just making sure we have somewhat accurate information. The mark of a true scientist. Indeed. Yep, or do some hard work <laughs> and then get completely misinterpreted. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, mobility continues to affect, as far as I can tell, your strafing speed and your initial jump height, walking speed, and, and that's what it is. And then the sprinting is not tied to mobility as far as I can tell, you know, with the naked eye. You, you will run the same at zero mobility as you will at 10. Um, some people I know are upset by that. And like, I'm not trying to come out and be like, oh, yeah, they said that we were going to be fast. They lied to us. No, because mobility, they never came out and said, hey, we're going to change mobility from the ground up to make it so that it will be tied to your sprinting. No, but they made you faster in other ways. I mean, Mm -hmm. you can move quicker by jumping around. You can feel that. Before the patch, I had no reason to jump around with burst glide with my warlock. It just felt terrible. But now it feels great. Uh, I do it all the time. Supers feel a lot better. I don't know specifically how much 
faster you can strafe because I didn't record enough of that beforehand, but I just know that my strafe feels really good right now. For the first time ever, I'm actually using high mobility because I play a lot of rumble and in rumble, I feel like you don't need a ton of resilience because I'm getting shot by like 30 different people. I mean, it's only an eight man playlist. I don't know how 30 people are shooting me, but (laughs) somehow, (laughs) but I don't feel like I need a ton of resilience, but I do want to try and out strafe people and Mm -hmm. uh, moving around with the quick warlock skating and the quick strafing. I'm feeling good with high mobility. Yeah, I definitely, it, it felt a little bit weird going through my armor set where I'm running, you know, like one, six, 10 or something like that. And just going through each piece and flipping it from resilience or flipping it from recovery to mobility, just to, you know, just to see, see what it's like, see if it's good. <laughs> and um, yeah, even just a couple points of mobility really makes a difference going from, you know, going from zero or one or two to, to three or four or five. Uh, to the point where when I'm at zero mobility now, or I'm at one mobility, it feels, I feel clunky. I mm-hmm. feel like I'm yeah. losing gunfights because I just don't have enough in place there. Especially on PC. Cause like if you're playing on console, they have the aim assist over there, right? So if you're playing people on console, maybe you're fighting somebody who's still clutching onto that Uriel's gift dream and they're trying <laughs> to shoot you at mid range and more of the bullets are hitting you than you would like. But on PC, a lot of people are using hand cannons. Well, I mean, they have been. A lot of people are using hand cannons everywhere now because they're great. But uh, specifically on PC, they don't have the aim assist if they're using the mouse and keyboard. So I find that the strafe is a little more viable because if they're fighting you with a hand cannon and they miss like one shot, just completely ruins their optimal time to kill. And I kill you with my Antiope because I am a no-skill scrub. And... uh, Haha, ha, sucks to be you. <laughs> Checks out. <laughs> okay, so uh, so the 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 final verdict is sprinting is sprinting, right? It hasn't changed, right. not affected my mobility, consistent across subclasses, unless you know you got some exotic on or something like that. Right. Uh, strafing, walking, all of that feels different. Not quite sure exactly how much the change in speed is. Mm. And then there's uh, well, then there's jumps. Right. There is jumping. And I always uh, I always knew you as a, uh, a fan of the Warlock Surf in D1. Mm. And, uh, you know, it's a, been a tough thing to do with sort of vanilla Destiny 2. Uh, how are you feeling about your jump options? Uh, it's either burst glide or just go home. <laughs> like, I don't know what else to tell you. Like, I was specifically trying to use the other ones because I was like, oh, well, maybe they're more viable. <laughs> just like two minutes later. Nope. Back to burst glide. <laughs> Can't do anything else. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know what you guys are using. What if? Well, are you at least are you at least pretty happy to have that burst back? Because I think we oh, probably yeah. in the same boat where it felt like the first version of it was like to jump and to hit somehow somehow mud in the air yeah. is what it felt like. So it's it's at least nice nice for that burst to come back. It's fantastic, and I don't know what they did in relationship with burst glide and like the dawn blade super but whatever they did please don't change that because it's <laughs> it's amazing i just i love popping my super and like effortlessly chasing people down with that jump it's actually sometimes almost a little too quick i feel like it I'm is you like find a wily walls. coyote with a <laughs> with a rocket do the kids know who the f that is I don't even know. no it's <laughs> like um it's like when you shoot a rocket you jump on it you'd be your part your duo he flies you over to the bad guys you shoot him and you win a chicken dinner that's what it's like that's and they'll, they'll that's, understand they, that. they know what that is right? yeah. kids these days <laughs> yep. god damn it <laughs> one thing that i wanted to try was i like and i specifically had the vision of your d1 warlock surfing video that you did in my head mm-hmm. when i hopped on my warlock is like all right let's get the surf going so like jump and then as you, you know, you're at low mobility to try and control your jump height. And then when you hit the apex of the jump, you engage the burst to push you into the ground and build some speed up. Right. And that doesn't quite work the same anymore. It's, yeah, it's funny that you bring that up. I spent like an hour today trying to figure out if you warlock skate better with zero mobility like you did in D1, or if you, you know, skate better with high mobility. And uh, I, I can't tell 
like if there's a real difference and this is me doing it at the uh the raid area mm-hmm. where, the, where those moron cabal are just standing there not doing anything to you it's that it's like a perfectly flat perfectly flat <laughs> surface that you can jump on <laughs> and if you're doing it on a perfectly flat area i can't tell if there's a difference between skating with zero mobility or nine in terms of like getting from point a to point b really quickly i kind of a wash yeah i mean it's different though when you're warlock surfing on bumpy terrain and like every sure pvp map in the game there's no pvp map in the game with like a perfectly smooth floor like the way you get in the raid but uh so i don't know how that yet kind of affects it but for right now i think you can skate you can warlock skate at nine mobility and not worry that like, oh, if they, if they have zero mobility, they're going to be going so much quicker than me. Because right now, I don't think that's the case. Hmm. Well, so there, there's a new timing to it as well, right? Like if you're hitting that, that engaging that burst too late in your jump, like you don't, you don't get the burst from it. You have to hit it at some point sort of on the, the, the first half of the jump, like before you hit that apex. Yeah. Do you have the timing down? Um, What's optimal there? Sort of. I mean, there's one you can kind of, there's two different ways to do it. There's the one where you, you do it, uh, you burst down into the ground. I've, I've been sort of been doing it on like a minor delay, like maybe halfway between your apex and the ground. You do it and then you push yourself down and then you hit jump again right when you hit the ground and you just keep doing that over and over. And then if you, if you're doing it in like a long chain and you want to finish it off, when you hit the ground that final time, then you can do the burst glide again, like right instantly when you hit the ground and then push off and you get like an extra little oomph if you're going to like an objective or like, a, I don't know, power ammo, whatever. But it's kind of like one of those things where you'll feel if you get the timing right, you're like, oh, that was good. Like you, you know that you're moving a little bit quicker than you normally would if you're running. And if you don't get it right, you're like, oh, I feel like I got like mashed potatoes in my shoes. I don't know what I'm doing right now. <laughs> so fallout. That's great and all that you did all that warlock testing, but uh, what about Titans? <laughs> Is there like should? Because I've heard from King Koala that I should try and get no mobility, and you're saying I should have mobility. Now, what should I do? You should listen to anyone who is not me, because I have done <laughs> no work. With the Titan, all I did was I saw that video that Cammy Cakes put out. He's like, here we go, Titan skating with a mouse. <laughs> My jaw just <laughs> dropped on the floor. I was like, well, I picked a bad time to, to main a warlock. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I don't know exactly how uh, it works best. Maybe zero is better for the Titan. Keen would probably know better than that than I would. But I just know the final result with the Titan is if you do that correctly, holy lord. It is Very hard to do on a controller. (laughs) I haven't been able to do it at all on a controller. Something, something macro. Yeah, what is that? I don't know what that is. I know what is that. Nobody knows what a macro is. (laughs) Cheater. It sounds like like cheating. (laughs) I'm going to, um, and I only feel comfortable saying this, knowing that he's not here and that it'll be days before he hears this. (laughs) I'm going to break ranks with Keen Koala and say you should have some mobility on your Titan. I was playing my Titan today, and I had it at my my what, one or whatever mobility. And it felt chewy. I felt like at least in Rumble, felt like I was losing fights. Oh, I didn't miss it at all yeah. as soon as I switched. You didn't miss it or at did, all when you turned it all the way up, and or when turned you turned it all it the way down. Oh, no, not at all. I felt so much better, especially in Rumble. Without can it. you believe ah, this hipster? We get a we get a mobility gotta go fast update. This kid over here just turns turn it all the way down. I don't want it. Zero. <laughs> I don't want it. Take it back. <laughs> I think strafe speed is maybe a thing that uh, no shots at anyone because I do it too. But that controller users don't utilize as effectively because of that dead space and a stick. When you go to the other side, you don't mm. start moving in the opposite direction as fast. Therefore, that back and forth wiggle that you can do with AD just isn't there on a stick. And if mobility has to do with strafe speed and you want some of that, you know, you're not getting as much out of it on a controller. So why not, you know, stick to resilience and recovery and just tank a few more shots as opposed to constantly trying to dodge every bullet. So maybe it could just be like player choice thing. It's like when it comes down to those duels, I know I can't zigzag and I'm not going to be spamming crouch button like a, like a maniac, 
Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm just going to take tank that extra hand cannon shot and hope that my aim is true and win. So it could just be player preference. I hope my aim is true. <laughs> is, that, um, <laughs> is that a real song? You know, you, you hear these things in your head and you just don't know what it's going to be like. Um, all right. Well, we, we've got a couple minutes here. Uh, mobility stuff aside, uh, Fallout, how you liking this patch, man? I really like it. I mean... I've been playing a lot of console because I play a lot of trials. And if you want to play with people on Twitch and trials, you kind of have to play on console because like PC trials is kind of like fight club pretty much. <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> we don't talk about it. <laughs> yeah, there's, been talking about it. Uh, there's, there's pretty much like 10 people who play PC trials, literally just 10. I've looked into it. I know all the names. If, if you go into trials, you're going to fight four of those 10 people. But, uh, um, so the biggest thing for the patch that I feel you will notice right away is, and you guys can agree or disagree with me, it's the hand cannon changes. Mm. Feels good, right? Love them. Yeah. So good. And like, I'm really happy that they did that because my favorite or one of my favorite things about D1 was just how good hand cannons felt when you brought them to a PVP fight. And I didn't feel that right away on console in D2 when... PC came out, I felt it a little bit more because you got that control with the mouse and keyboard. But I felt bad that the console folk were like left out to a degree. Mm-hmm. And uh, now that they made that change, I think it feels fantastic. I like that change a lot. I like that they've made it because it's changed the meta pretty much on console. You're, we're going to have people this weekend in trials who are like using hand cannons instead of a Uriel's. Like what even, what world is this where that happens? <laughs> uh, we have more pulse rifles that we can use right now. Happy about that. Rumble is kind of out of control, but at the same time, I really like it. I can't stop playing it. Right. So like, I, I don't know. Overall, Fallout. I like uh, the patch. What uh, what hand cannon do you then? <sighs> okay. Um, I think my number one is still the Allegro. I'm a hipster. I like that blue hand cannon. Really like the Allegro. Uh, the the Dire Promise, very good. If you have that, it's a 150 rate of fire hand cannon. The old fashioned. Very good. Better Devils feels great. The Sunshot is good. Yeah. Um, I know they got to buff those 180 rate of fire hand cannons. I, I don't like them. Uh, you're probably not going to convince me to pick one up. I know that like they have really good optimal time to kill, but there's something about the recoil pattern. Like it, it you know what I'm talking about? Like it mm-hmm. kicks yeah, it no, no, directly weird. into your face. It's like when you're a kid and someone's like, oh, I'm not touching you. And they're like, they're putting their hand in your face. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's in my face. <laughs> I, I don't like it. I don't like it. Yeah, you, we've been uh, chatting about Allegro and, and Discord for a while. I'm like, yeah, I heard it was good. Everyone started using it. Like I had a blue and I used it and I was just like, I don't care enough to, to use a blue gun. And then you're like, you kind of convinced me like, no, look, at here's the numbers. We talked about the range versus uh, what is it? Minuet 42. Mm hmm. And finally it dropped again and I was like, okay. And uh, yeah, I used it here and there. It's definitely good. But now post patch, it's just like you get those crispy ricochet rounds and with the, the like st- the hand cans are pretty sticky and and not just Allegro, but I was using mm-hmm. that. Uh, what's the high impact from EDZ style one? I mean, that thing is weird. It's clunky. It's got quick draw, but it's like, I, I feel very strange using those guns, but I was hitting shots with that from, way farther so far that I was consistently hitting crits, but they weren't doing 71 to the head. It was like 65, Yeah. but that's enough to still, to still get your shots and still get a kill. So you can actually push a little bit, bit beyond the, the range and still hit shots every once in a while. It makes every hand cannon really solid. So definitely those, keep, were, those were good. I keep accidentally deleting Allegro when I get one, <laughs> just like out of habit of deleting blues. So yeah, yeah. But I'll get it again get it and I'll, I'll eventually know. All right. Well, let's, let, let's finish this out by talking about rumble because, um, I like rumble. <laughs> I liked old rumble. I like this rumble, which is different. Um, but I want to, I want to, I want to get some advice. Uh, you, you, but you've been playing some rumble. Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, let me check your qualifications. Have you won any rumbles yet? <laughs> come, come on, man. Sure. I have like a ton. 
Like, okay. like <laughs> get out of here, birds. What are you, t- what are you talking okay. to? Okay, Jeez. okay, just checking. I'm just checking. Uh, what is your pro rumble strategy? Because as far as I can tell, it's really about finding an edge. I mean, and just like getting power ammo consistently is is a big edge right there. Using your super. But when it's coming down to one or two kills or surviving when you would have otherwise died, I mean, these little things add up. So what, what are you what are you using in Rumble and what's working for you? Um, I have my tryhard Rumble loadout is the anti uh, sure. the darkest before pulse rifle. Sure. Uh, the legend of Hackerius. Yep. No comment there. <laughs> sure. No, I mean, <laughs> quietly judging I what's there to say. <laughs> the Legend of Acrius. And again, my try hard build and uh, Dawnblade with 10 mobility. And because the spawns are kind of like goofy right now, I some people might hate me for this, but you know what? I'm among friends here. Use whatever, don't apologize. Play however, don't apologize. We haven't I heard that in a bit. <laughs> There's like. You can find areas of the map where maybe two or three people will spawn nearby. And you can roam away from there if it's kind of like a dead zone, if there's not a lot of action going on. But for the most part, if you're winning your ones and hitting your shots, you can actually just kind of stick to oh, one area. It yeah, can be like I your stomping ground. I love anchoring myself to like a corner and yeah. just like go this way. And that spawn, <laughs> go get that spawn, and just like walk back and forth between my left and right spawn, and uh, clean up. <laughs> there you go. And it's for the, the record, way. for anyone listening right now, be like, oh, he's camping. That's not camping. All right, you're you're patrolling an area. Yeah. Okay, camping Walking is like hiding in a corner with mascara, and you've got like I don't know, like an umbrella. You got I don't I don't even I don't even know. You have you have like a <laughs> fort. It's some kind of uh, weird fort. You're like crouching and waiting, but no, no, no. Like you're camping is where you build area. four walls and you ramp in the middle and you put four more walls above <laughs> that. And then they, you put the weapon skin on and you stand up at the yeah. top and you shoot a rocket. Your friend jumps That's on the, the rocket one. and you win a chicken dinner. That's what camping is. <laughs> That's this camping. Is a, been doing this, this isn't recently. camping. This is <laughs> different. <laughs> but no, you just, you kind of take control of an area and then it's kind of, rumble is good right now because it helps you practice thriving in chaos because <laughs> rumble is kind of chaos. You can be in a one-on-one or you can be in like a one-on-three or a one-on-one on one-on-one. But I'd like it even though it's kind of busy just mm-hmm. because it helps me practice my engagements, it helps me practice my slaying power. And then later when I go into a team game with my friends, I feel that much better, that much sharper because I've been practicing. I'm, I'm winning my ones. I'm landing my shots. I know how to move and all that good stuff. Let me ask you this. Uh, What mods are you running on your Rumble build? Uh, Okay. Um, I'm playing with a controller right now, both on console and on PC. I know that like up till last week I was using mouse and keyboard. Um, I've taken like a step, not a step back. I've decided to take like a week or two to see how I feel using a controller. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Using a controller on PC like a nub. But because I'm using a controller, I'm using um, recoil modifications because you don't really need them when you use a mouse and contr- uh, mouse keyboard, but you kind of need them a little bit more when you play with a controller because there's that wild kick to the, uh, the pulse rifle. Like I said, the darkest before, great pulse rifle, but I'd like to control the recoil a little bit more. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to control the recoil on that. If I'm playing Rumble, believe it or not, I'm using a mod I've almost never used, which is increased handling for power weapon. Because (laughs) there's a lot of power going around in Rumble. And if you are good enough to hold on to it for as long as you can, you can make really big plays with the Acrius, obviously. And it has terrible handling. It's a very (laughs) slow gun. But if you have that... Um, that mod for the extra weapon handling on the power. You can ADS a little quicker. And uh, yeah, I've been using that. And then everything else just goes into either a random, you know, like, oh, faster grenades. Okay, sure. Or like recovery. Interesting. All right. Yeah. Well, I, I see we're almost at time here. So uh, Westworld is a show set in the future <laughs> with a theme park populated full of Western robots. Perfect recreation 
uh, for the ultra rich to go act out their Wild West fantasies, whether that's being the lone desperado who saves the day or the sociopath who uh, murders and and pillages and uh, does bad stuff. But it turns out the designer of this park, played by Anthony Hopkins, uh, has built a little bit more than a place for rich people to go get their rocks off. Uh, It's a great show and it bears uh, bears, uh, repeated watchings. You'll notice things second time around. Fallout, thank you so much (laughs) for coming on the show. (laughs) Yes. Uh, Don't worry about it. If for some reason, people uh, <laughs> came out of this interview and want to hear more from you. Uh, where might they do that? What? Oh, uh, yeah. Find me YouTube.com slash Fallout Plays, Twitch.tv slash Fallout Plays, uh, Twitter dot whatever. I don't know. Fallout Plays. I'm, I'm around. Just Google Fallout Plays. You'll find me. What do you? I don't know. I'm around. I like having uh, slash shit beer slash the pirate. Beer the pirate. <laughs> yeah, don't worry I about that I love having one. Fallout on the show because we can just like fuck with him completely because like, <laughs> he, like we can't have rhythm on and just harass him his first time on the show <laughs> and just like <laughs> just yeah. make him listen to that sort yeah. of thing. But you know, Fallout is great. You, you, you just go with it. You uh, get make it. Make it worth it. Thanks for having <laughs> me on, boys. Pleasure as always. <laughs> See you the next Talk time you, we mess with. <laughs> Looking forward to it. I do, I do for you. I'm not too sure why. For all the work that I put in. Okay, that's it, folks. Uh, this was kind of a whirlwind week. We've only had the update for a couple days. We played a lot, but there's a lot more to do. And that's good because next week we have uh, tons of stuff we haven't even touched on. Like competitive, no radar. So we'll get to that next week and maybe we'll bring a friend for that one too. Yeah, we have to play some trials yeah. and uh, see how that goes. Keep digging, everyone. There's so much more meta out there to find. Find that gun, make it popular. Make a montage. <laughs> yeah, did you guys see Drewski's montage of just punching with an arc strider before the update? That is the kind of shit I love. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Moment of the week in my heart. That's actually a campaign we're starting on GoFundMe. Uh, go to www.gofundme.com slash Drewski should have won Moment of the Week and vote for his Arc Strider punching <laughs> montage. And we'll tell Cosmo. We, maybe we can get a retcon. <laughs> yeah. I'm, uh, I'm hitting up the community managers on Twitter. We're going to get this fixed. Demand they publish a retraction. <laughs> no shots to whatever one. I feel like we're <laughs> insulting their hard work. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Drewski had the better mind. <laughs> I'll let you guys <laughs> keep posting blocks, but I just got to say. <laughs> Ugh, wrap it up. All right, Crucible Radio. Radio. You guys said that at the same time, so it just sounded like you guys both just went, Go, Crucible Radio! (laughs) That's the end. Yep. Go, Crucible Crucible Radio! 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 That's good. good. Goodbye, everyone. Nerds. Hello everyone, Swain here. You know that Crucible Radio is your source for all things Destiny PvP, and I know you want more than just this video, so make sure to head on over to crucibleradio.com to find all of our past episodes, detailed Crucible maps, t-shirts, and much, much more.